Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're doing another Ryzen 5 vs. Intel Showdown, and this is going to be a price-to-price -price comparison. It's featuring the Ryzen 5 1600 going up against the Intel i5-7600K. So in New Zealand, uh, these two guys are pretty similar in price. They're coming in at a very similar price point. So I thought, hey, let's do a showdown between these two. Plus, you guys asked for it also. So let's jump right into it then with the uh, CPU specs then. So the Ryzen 5 1600, if you do not know, is a 6-core, 12-thread CPU with a 3.2 GHz base clock and a 3.6 GHz turbo clock. It is unlocked like every other Ryzen chip also, so you can overclock it and we will be doing that. The Intel i5-7600K is a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU with a 3.8 GHz base clock and a 4.2 GHz turbo clock and it is also unlocked and we also did overclock it. So let's talk about the test rigs then, that's important. So for the 1600 we use my Ryzen 5 test rig. Uh, this is built around the X370 Aorus Gaming K7 motherboard which has been absolutely excellent. I have no complaints there and I really like that motherboard. If I was going to build a Ryzen rig I would probably purchase that motherboard. A bit expensive but I really like it. Now the uh, 7600K was tested on my KB Lake test rig. So this features the uh, Z270 ASRock Fatality Gaming K6 motherboard. Uh, I also really, really like it. This is the first ASRock motherboard I've ever used and I uh, really enjoy it. So yeah, I can see where ASRock gets their reputation from for making really good motherboards. So let's talk now about clock speed. So I benchmark both of these CPUs at their stock clock speeds but also overclock speeds. So the 1600 here managed to overclock up to 3.9 gigahertz. That's decent. Uh, it's about average I would say. Out of these Ryzen CPUs, I mean I've overclocked to like 7 now I think. Um, I'm seeing between 3.8 and like 4.1. So if you get a really good one, you'll get about 4.1 gigahertz out of it. Um, if you get a more average one, you may only get 3.8. So 3.9, that's still a decent overclock on all 6 cores. The 7600K, by comparison, much higher clock straight out of the factory and overclocks much better also. I managed to get 4.8 gigahertz out of this guy. You get a real good one, you'll get like 5 gigahertz out of it, but 4.8 gigahertz on all four cores, and that's hauling along quite well. So with all that being said, uh, let's jump into the benchmarks. As always, these are a mix of productivity and gaming. Obviously, the 7600K, not really the best for productivity. No one would probably buy it for that. But it's a good indicator of the CPU sort of like raw oomph. Uh, and the other thing to note is that these, uh, neither of these CPUs were throttling. Um, they were well under their thermal limit, so there was no throttling to be seen on either CPU. So let's jump into the benchmarks and see how they perform.
we're back. So, big win there, even in stock form for the 1600 in productivity stuff. It really, really takes off. When it overclocks, it does even better. 7600K, obviously not really made for productivity, so it doesn't really score too well there. But it does do well in gaming, which is what you would expect. Now you might note that the difference with it in stock form and overclocked wasn't actually that much. I think that's because the stock clocks of the 7600K are quite high to begin with. And I think it's also that uh, my GPU can only flow so much, the GTX 1080. If I had something like a 1080 Ti in there, we might see a bit more of a difference. But to be honest, most of you guys aren't going to be running a GPU that powerful. Most of you guys probably aren't even running a GTX 1080. You're probably running things like 1070s, 1060s, 580, 570, 480, 470 type cards. Uh, so yeah, that really highlights it. The high clock speed of the 7600K there, um, when you overclock it even further, you won't really see that much in games. Maybe if it was a very uh, physics-based game, you would see more gains there. But you would also see more gains out of the 1600. And this did do better with it overclocked, although those stock clock speeds are a little bit on the low side. So we would expect it to do quite a bit better once it actually is overclocked. But yeah, very interesting results. I thought that uh, I, I thought the 7600K would actually do a little bit better in the gaming um, than it did by comparison to the 1600. But no, that 1600 really is a powerful CPU. Which brings us now to the conclusion, and we have to bring price into the equation. So right now, if you go over to playtech.co.nz and want to pick up the 7600K, it's going to be setting you back 366 New Zealand dollars. Now, if you also are on playtech.co.nz and you want to pick up the Ryzen 5 1600, that will set you back 349 New Zealand dollars, so it's $17 cheaper. And this comes with a cooler, where the 7600K doesn't, so you also have to buy a cooler. And the stock cooler with this guy, the Spire, is very solid. You'll be able to overclock with it just fine. It does get a bit toasty, but it's fine to have a CPU running in the 80 degrees range. It's not going to be an issue at all. So yeah, very, very interesting there in terms of price. But let's bring in the averages then. So if you take the average FPS for all the benchmarks I did from 3D Mark onwards, we see that the 1600 actually wins an average FPS over the 7600K when they're overclocked. I am astounded that the Ryzen 5 1600 is that good. This is one of the best value for money CPUs I have ever seen. So not only is it cheaper, not only does it come with a cooler, more cores, more threads, it actually wins in terms of average FPS in my own testing. That is just such an achievement, and this is probably the best value for money CPU you can buy right now. It is such good value, um, and yet yeah, I would buy the CPU in a heartbeat if I was going to build a new rig uh, that I wanted something to be very good value for money. I would definitely go for the Ryzen 5 1600. This is an excellent CPU. I would imagine in gaming, uh, the difference between them will only increase over time as more and more games uh, can take full advantage of those uh, 6 cores and 12 threads. But yeah, it's a phenomenal CPU and I really would recommend it. Not only to people looking to build a gaming PC, but those who want like an entry level workstation PC. A streamer or someone like me who does a sort of 50-50 mix of gaming and uh, productivity stuff. This will be an excellent CPU. It's sort of like a super cheap 6800K. So to get you in the door um, and it's going to be very, very good for that stuff, as you guys saw in those productivity scores. So yeah, big win for the Ryzen 5 1600. This is a very, very good value CPU, and I highly recommend it to all of you out there. Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel, Tech Showdown, if you haven't already. Share this video around as well. It really helps me out, brings new people in. And uh, I love hearing uh, your guys' comments as well. So leave them in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.